As for Mr. Trump's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, he's reportedly giving federal prosecutors in New York new information about the president's family business. The New York Times says Cohen met with federal prosecutors last month to talk about possible irregularities in the Trump organization and a donor to the inaugural committee. Cohen is set to start a three-year prison sentence in May for store testimony to Congress next, next week. President Trump says he's not concerned with what Cohen will say. Oh, really? Well, let's talk about that. Let's bring in our panel to discuss all of this. Uh, political analyst Peter Matthews, a professor of political science at Cypress College, and David Katz is a former assistant U.S. attorney. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming in on another day of Manafort, Cohen et al. <laughs> and Mueller. Uh, let's begin with this deadline for the sentencing recommendation. It has come and gone. Peter, first to you. What could we learn from it, given Mueller is reportedly close to releasing his final report. Well, we know that uh, Mueller's report is going to be very explosive in one way or the other. And even if he, if Trump is not, you know, completely implicated, there are a lot of other legal problems that he'll be facing afterwards. And so everyone's waiting on this report to see what exactly is in it. Now, we don't know if the attorney general will actually reveal the full report or just summarize it or take some of it out. That's a real problem. And Congress wants to have the full report at least summarized for them and for the public. They really want to see the report, the, the uh, members of Congress. It's very important that in terms of an oversight function that Congress should be able to do this. Well, David, it's important to remember the special counsel had a cooperation deal with Manafort, and Manafort broke that deal. Do you think we could get a better understanding of why from this filing? Well, I think we will get a better understanding, but I think already uh, Mueller is concerned. I think everyone is concerned uh, who wants to be conscientious about this, that uh, he got pardoned. He could be sprung from jail that same day and have no federal uh, incarceration consequences. So with that in mind, the DA in New York City has convened a grand jury, according to reliable sources, and is planning to charge Manafort with state crimes, which would not violate the law in the state of New York at once, as long as they didn't arise out of the same incident. So I think you can expect charges of state tax violations, not paying his state taxes in New York by Manafort, and also cheating uh, two different banks um, in, uh, in New York City. Well, Peter, uh, is a pardon by President Trump of Manafort a real possibility, do you think? It always is because uh, Trump is unpredictable what he would do, but Trump is really, when his back is against the wall, he could uh, lash out and do something like pardoning Manafort. But like uh, David said, you know, the state charges are unpardonable by the president. And that's very important that we understand that. And Trump, I think, knows that he's concerned about it. But what can he do about it? I don't think he can do much about it. But he could very well do a federal pardon. And to me, the pardon power is sometimes just completely overused because, after all, no one should be above the law, especially the president. Well, let's talk about another former Trump associate, Michael Cohen. Uh, David, he's headed to prison in a few weeks. But apparently, he met last month with federal prosecutors in Manhattan, offering information about possible irregularities within the president's family business and about a donor to the inaugural committee. What could the relevance be here, David? Well, Natalie, you know, uh, Michael Cohen is supposed to go to prison uh, about two and a half months from now. He got an extension on the date. And he's hoping to get not a get out of jail free card, but a get out of jail sooner card. How would he do that? By cooperating with the federal prosecutors in the Southern District of New York. This is not Mueller now. This is the federal prosecutors there in New York. Um, he would have them go into court and ask the federal judge in Michael Cohen's case to give him a sentence reduction which would lessen the three-year term. He wants to cooperate in order to get that. And so his latest information from Michael Cohn, it may be true, it may not be true, but he says that there are irregularities in insurance claims uh, by the uh, Trump organization, not necessarily by Trump himself. It could be by Trump Jr., as I say, or it could all be made up. Um, but the claim is that perhaps the uh, Mar-a-Lago uh, received $17 million um, in insurance claims. And uh, some people uh, apparently are saying that it didn't look like it ever had $17 million worth of damage done to it. That would, of course, be just a, a raw fraud if it were true. Yeah, also, don't forget, Natalie, there's, there's the uh, inaugural committee money, and that's where did that money come from? They raised $107 million, twice as much as Barack Obama raised, and they didn't put out much of an inauguration compared to Obama. I mean, they put out much more elaborate inauguration. Where is the money, the rest of the money going? And where is it gone? And also Mr. Zuberi is a question. You know, did his money that he donated to the committee, 
was that money from any foreign sources or not? There's a very important question here about play, pay to play with the inaugural committee as well. Well, so another front. Cohen will testify publicly and behind closed doors on Capitol Hill next week. Uh, he has said he's ready to speak honestly to the American people with his own voice. What can we expect, David, to you? Well, I think he's going to talk on Wednesday in an open session to the House Oversight Committee. And they have 10 areas of inquiry. A lot of them are what you would expect. Uh, you know, he's pled guilty in federal court to having paid this hush money and have done, having done so at the direction of President Trump. He said that in open court and they asked for a, a reduced sentence for him because of his cooperation. So in that sense, a Mueller and the federal government vouched for that testimony. He's also going to get into all of these other areas, uh, nine other areas that Michael Cohn would know about and that he's going to testify publicly about. So I think that's going to be a real bombshell on Wednesday. And then two closed sessions uh, regarding intelligence matters uh, that may have to do with the Russia uh, probe, have to do with the collusion, the conspiracy with Russia, which according to Michael Cohn went on all throughout the campaign, the presidential campaign in 2016. President Trump was saying at the time that he had cut off any negotiations uh, with the Russians about a Trump Tower Moscow. But in fact, uh, those negotiations went on, would have been of great interest to the electorate had they known in 2016 that right during the convention, right during the campaign against Hillary Clinton, uh, according to Michael Cohn, Trump and the Trump Organization was still playing footsie with the Russians trying to get approval of a Trump Tower Moscow. M much more to keep an eye on as the Mueller campaign winds down. David Katz, uh, Peter Matthews, we really appreciate your insights. Thank you both so much. Great to Thank be you. with you. Thank you.